In this topic, you will learn how to create and print purchase orders as well as record a supplier's order acknowledgement. Now, the purchase order function is used to record purchase orders placed with suppliers. The process is the same to record purchase orders with managed in-stock products, services, and fixed assets. Now, the creation of a purchase order allows you to send a purchase order to the supplier, generate a stock in progress report, and prepare for the receipt of stock products or the performance of the services. Now, purchase orders can be created via manual direct order entry, also taking into account requirements initiated within the system procurement suggestions and the purchase requests. Now, the purchase flow requires three types of records defined in common data, and that would be suppliers, products, and price lists. Now let's go through the process of creating a purchase order. To do that, we go to the purchasing module, we go to the orders block, and the orders function. The first thing you select is the entry transaction or the data entry screen that can be customized and we'll select all to give us all the options available to us. Now the screen is open up you can see all the orders on the left side which is the left list and we see the order that it's on. To create a brand new order you click new to create. The first thing you enter is the receiving site. The order field is the document number field is automatically generated on creation and then the order date the next thing is the supplier you can enter the supplier ID if you know it or you can do the selection window and enter the supplier that way supplier comes up and you can select it once selecting the supplier all the defaults from the supplier record comes in on a management tab you can see the bill by supplier who's going to be billed. The corp is actually the address field. You can change the address field according to the addresses from the supplier record as well. The currency actually defaults from the supplier record, the pay to, and also that address. Also the payment terms that you set up with the supplier. The invoicing site as well that you can change. Settlement discount, the buyer, also the carrier that you can select. Also you can see the delivery mode that's actually being used which is ground. You can see the analytical area where you can select reporting units down here below and the status of every single step with the supplier including if there's a signature that process is actually in place. Whether it's been printed, closed, received and also invoice for the product. The next thing you do of course is enter the lines. You can enter lines in the product ID, or you can enter even a description. You can enter this in the grid mode, or you can select the pop-up view mode to enter your product. To enter the product, you can enter the product ID, and then we tap through. As you can see, it says this product is the object of a contract order, which says you have an agreement with the supplier to purchase a certain amount of product over a period of time. So these, this would be part of that contract. We go to the receiving site that you can actually modify if necessary. Also the address and a location reference where you can enter a free form field where I can enter information in that field as well. The unit of measure actually comes from the product record. The amount ordered quantity which is required so we enter the amount in here. If it was associated with a project we can enter the project ID. The expected delivery date is automatically calculated based on lead time and the gross price that can be modified, of course you have to be authorized to do so. Discounts that are associated with it. Landing costs as well. And as we tab through, you can see all the rest of the fields that are available. The tax also has to be entered. We're going to hit enter to go to a second line. As I mentioned, you can enter the product ID, or you can enter a description and then select from the description. We'll say we want to select bikes, and then if I tab, it shows me every single product that has bike within the name, and then we can select the bike that we would like to have. You can see the product is not referenced for the supplier. What that means is that 
in the supplier or the product record on a supplier tab this product is not linked to that supplier though supplier still may have this particular product you click OK and then continue and once again you do have to enter in the quantity next we create on creation you can see the order number has been assigned coming from a sequence counter associated with this particular type of transaction all the details are shown here down at the bottom you can see if signature was needed it would say that it just needs to be signed however it says the signature is not managed what that means is that if it was managed I would not be able to print unless it's signed off on. In addition, on an order, you can actually cancel a line or close a line if you decide that, well, we're not going to make that purchase. And here we're going to close the bike line. So I can select the action icon here and just click close. It'll prompt me to let me know that, oh, you're not going to receive this particular product. So yes, let's go ahead and close it. Now let's go ahead and print our purchase order. To do that, let's go ahead and resave it first, and now go ahead and print, and then select record. As you can see, we have two options that are available for different printing formats, crystal reports. Of course, you can have multiple. You basically have to set those up in parameters. We'll go ahead and select the first option here to print. What comes up is the report parameters screen. You can make modifications here as well, and we'll go ahead and print. Your options are to, of course, be able to print it out on paper, or two, you can actually use it depending on how this is set up. You can actually email it as well. And we click open and click OK, and here is our purchase order that we can send out, either print on paper again, or the options available here allowing us to email it as well. You can also see on the management tab down at the bottom it does say that it's been printed. You can also do acknowledgement information as well. If we go to the totals tab, first you can enter invoicing elements. If there are additional charges or discounts that apply, you select the code which actually pulls in the additional charges or discounts by either percentage or amount. The acknowledgement notes area, which we discussed earlier, we can enter acknowledgement, say once the acknowledgement of receipt of the supplier has been received, you can enter the date and the number of the acknowledgement. You can also enter some notes if it has been delayed, for instance. So in that case, you can go back on the purchase order line to update the new expected receipt date. So this is acknowledgement information that actually can be entered. Additional areas of interest on the right panel, you can see the signature process or history that you can see. You can add text to the header or the footer. You can modify the order address or the shipment address. You can also do prepayments as well, check order status, do an inquiry, and also journal traceability. So basically what we've learned is how to create and print a direct purchase order, also how to update the purchase order with supplier acknowledgement notes.